Thank you for watching Pappy's Ponderings. My hope is that you will be blessed by today's ponderings. It is my belief that the Creator of all things knows what's best for His creation, and He has given us His words to help us live by, to give us the best life here on earth and in eternity. So let's ponder some of His words today. Proverbs 29:18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. In today's world, I'm afraid too many have no vision and are only concerned with pleasing themselves. Today, let's read a beautiful psalm written by David. And notice as we read Psalm 19, it's easily divided into three parts. Verses 1 through 6 shows God's revelation in creation. Verses 7 through 11 shows God's revelation in the law. And finally, the response of the man of faith in verses 12 through 14. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my strength, and my Redeemer. Just as in these first six verses, the testimony of the universe comes forth constantly and clearly, but sinful mankind persistently resist it. It doesn't matter the color of our skin or the language we speak. We can know there is a God when we look up into the skies or when we see any of the beauties of this earth. I love to hike into the mountains sit on a log or a rock in the creek, panting for gold, watching and listening to the pure water flow from the tops of the mountain, or maybe camp near a lake like this and relax, pondering the handiwork of our Creator. No one who can see or hear or feel has any excuse to believe there is no God. The very elements of nature preach of a loving and magnificent God. Our hearts are hardened if we choose not to believe. We will have no excuse throughout eternity if we ignore all the signs the Lord has given us. Which reminds me of Romans 1, 18-22, where it says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but because vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened, professing them to be wise, they became fools. Just as Romans seven twelve says, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. 
David wrote this beautiful song, The Law of the Lord is Perfect. I open every pondering with the statement, The Creator of all things knows what's best for His creation and has given us His words to help us live by and to give us the best life here on earth and in eternity. And I can't say it better than David did here when he said, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. And don't forget, all through the pages of our Bibles, we find that keeping God's law brings great rewards and blessings. But notice, we are warned over and over that not keeping God's laws brings a curse from God or consequences. We discussed consequences on a previous ponderings. And finally, verses 12 through 14, probably a few verses we should all memorize and pray and meditate daily on. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So today, let's ponder all the gifts and blessings the Lord has given us and make a resolve to daily live upright and acceptable to Him. If you're unsure about receiving these blessings or have any other questions on God's desires for your life, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or use the link I always close with to help get those biblical answers. As always, thank you for joining me in these biblical ponderings. If you like these ponderings, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and feel free to share them with others. Thanks again and God bless. Let it be a sweet